Okay guys, so today we're looking at official SAT practice test number one. This is section four, the math with a calculator. So you have 55 minutes and 38 questions. Going on down again, I wanna point out that there are some diagrams here that you really should memorize. These ones up here with the circle, the rectangle and the triangles, you should definitely memorize. The ones down here, they don't really show up that often. Not a big deal, you can just refer to them if you actually need them. Let's look at question number one. So John's running at different speeds. Which interval is the target rate strictly increasing then strictly decreasing? And let's take a look at this. You've got zero and 30. Nope, it's not. 40 and 60. Yep, that looks like it. 50 and 65. 50, 65, no, that goes down and goes back up. And we got 70 to 90, nope. All right, so the right answer is B, between 40 and 60, right there. Question number two. What you have here is a missing constant. You don't know what the constant is, but you have to figure that out. So what they do is they provide you the Y value and the X value. You're gonna go ahead and plug those into the equation to figure out what the value of K is in, and then you can figure out what the value of Y is. Got 24 is equal to K times six. Based on that, we know that uh, K is 24 divided by six, which is gonna be four. So now X is five, so Y equals four times five, which gets you 20. C, straightforward. Question number three. So we've got two sets of parallel lines, S and T are parallel, L and M are parallel. Angle one is 35 degrees. So we'll go ahead and put a 35 there. And they wanna know what is the measure of angle two. Okay, so if you remember, this is one of the few things you have to know that a straight angle, for example, this is 180. And also opposite angles, or what they call vertical angles, are the same. So because of that, we know that this is 35 here, that's also 35 here, that's also 35. And uh, let me just fill this in. So this can be 180 minus 35, give me 145, 145, 145, and 145. So the answer is D. Question four, this is just a word problem. So put this into an equation, you've got 16, plus 4x is 10 more than 14. So 10 plus 14. And they want to know what the value of 8x is, by the way. So we're going to say that is equal to 24. And 16 plus 4x, subtract 16. Now, we don't need to actually solve what x is because we, don't want, we want to know what 8x is. So basically, we're going to double that. So 2 times 4x is going to be 8 times 2, which gets you 16. C. Question 5. We're looking for a strong negative association. Negative association just means that's going to be a downward sloping graph. So it's not going to be A, it's not going to be B. C is obviously pointing upwards. It's going to be D. Very straightforward. Question number 6. This is just a matter of unit conversion. So we want to know how many one milligram doses are in a two decagram container. Two decagrams is gonna eat two times 10 grams. So that's gonna be 20 grams. We've got 1000 milligrams in one gram. So 20 times 1000, that's gonna give you 20,000. Answer D. Question number seven. We've got 27,500 total installations and we want an approximate label for a vertical axis. We've got nine here, five here, six here, four there, and 3.5 there. So if you add all these numbers up, that's gonna get you 27.5. So therefore, each one of these units has to be representing a thousand. So it's going to be C. Number eight. 
this is actually a sneaky trick question. We're looking at the absolute value of n minus one plus one is equal to zero. And basically anything that's in there is gonna be either positive or zero. There's no way you're gonna get anything that's gonna equal zero. It's just not gonna happen. So let me just show you. So if I wanna go further, you got n minus one absolute value is equal to negative one. If you look at this here, that's always gonna be positive or zero. You're never gonna be able to get a negative number out of there. So the answer is D, no such value of n. Question number nine. So look at this graph carefully. You always wanna make note of the units. The important thing to keep in mind is that A is the speed in feet per second. Question number nine. So you're basically solving for air temperature which is the T up here. That's all you want to do. So you want to rearrange the whole thing. Uh, obviously, if you've got uh, A equals 1052 plus 1.08 T, you solve for T, first you can subtract 1052, so A minus 1052 equals 1.08 T, divide both sides by 1.08, and you are done, simple matter of what we call rearranging that is choice a question number 10 we're looking for the air temperature at a thousand feet per second let me just rewrite the equation here so it's a equals 1052 plus 1.08 t and we're looking at a thousand for that equals 1052 plus 1.08 t we can go ahead and subtract, so that's going to be negative 52 equals 1.08 T. This is when you want to bust out your calculator for stuff like this. So T is negative 52. T is negative 52 over 1.08. Using your calculator, you can get B, negative 48. Question number 11. Which of the following numbers is not a solution of the inequality? Many of you guys will be tempted to sit there and plug these four numbers in, but I wouldn't recommend doing that. That requires you having to go through and do this four times. So there's a faster way. Just go ahead and simplify this equation here. So we've got 3x minus 5 greater than or equal to 4x minus 3. I'm going to go ahead and move that over there and move that over there. So we're gonna have negative two greater than or equal to x. Now, let's simplify this. I'm actually gonna write this the other way, okay? What that tells you is that x is less than or equal to negative two, makes a little bit more sense. All three of these work except for a. And again, that's gonna be a lot faster than plugging in all four choices. Question number 12. We've got this chart here and they're asking for the average number of seeds per apple now how many apples are represented here make sure you read this carefully there are actually 12 apples if you look here there are two here there are four there there are one two and three now i want to make it clear when we say average you are not taking the average of three plus five plus six plus seven plus nine no, that is not what you're doing, okay? That is not what you're doing here. What you're doing is count out how many apples and how many seeds. So what you're actually doing is there are two threes and there are four fives. And there's six, there are two sevens, and there are three nines. And you're actually taking the average of all that divided by 12. So you can go ahead and add that all up. There is a faster way to do this. And the faster way to do this is three times two plus five times four plus six plus seven times two plus nine times three. All right, so if you want, you can go ahead and take your calculator out. This is all gonna have to give you 72. So we're looking at 72 divided by 12. And this is a good time to use your calculator, B6, so that's C. Now I do want to point out, 
choice C, we are not looking at the median, okay? That is not the median here. We're looking at the average, not median. Question number 13. Got this chart here, and they're asking for which category is approximately 19% of all the survey respondents. 0.19, and we're looking at all of them. So that's going to be unknown amount over 310, right? Part over total gets you percent. So all you have to do, bust out your calculator, 0.19 times 310, 58.9. And looking at that, it's gonna be there. We got geometry, males, so males taking geometry. Which of these values will change the most if the 24 inch measurement is removed from the data? So we got the 24 inch there getting removed. If the 24 is removed, what's gonna change the most? Well, I'm gonna tell you, it is actually the range. Because right now, it goes from eight up to 24, if you get rid of that, it's only going to go from 8 up to 16. So that's actually going to affect that a lot. It's not going to affect the mean or median as much just because there are so many numbers here. And the average is around you know 12 or 13. And the median is the middle number. So that's just really not going to get affected. And the mean's not going to be affected as much. Question number 15. What does a C-intercept represent in the graph? We're looking at this graph up here. And we've got the total cost here, the time and hours. So we're referring to this part right here. This has to do with the cost. And at zero hours, it's still costing, uh, what is it, $5. So what that means is that is the initial cost of renting the boat. Question 16. What represents the relationship between H and C? So this is basically asking you what is the graph of this line right here. Okay, we want the graph of this line. Well, we know that the y-intercept is at five, so it's gotta be an answer that's got a five on there. But let's do this carefully. A lot of people look at this and they see, well, you got one, two, three, four little blocks, and it goes up one, two, three. So they think, okay, rise over run, uh, it's gotta be, three-fourths and they choose B but no that is the wrong answer you can't look at the number of lines here what you have to look at is the fact that it actually increases by one hour and it goes up by three in terms of costs so the slope is actually three it is C question number 17 is the value of X where F of X is at its minimum what does that even mean a lot of people don't know when it says f of x is at its minimum, we're talking about the y value. So we're looking for the lowest y value here. And well, if you look at that, it's simply that dot. That's the lowest y value. So what's the x value associated with that? It is negative three, b. Number 18, which of the following relationships must be true? Okay, what does a solution mean? It just means that those numbers work in the equation, zero, is an x value that works and zero is also a y value that works we're going to go ahead and plug those numbers in so the first equation y is less than negative x plus a and the second equation is y is greater than x plus b is we're going to plug zero in here so zero is less than zero plus a and for this one you got zero is greater than zero plus b and what that means is this simplifies to be zero is less than A and zero is greater than B. Well, what does that tell you? That means that A is a positive number and B is a negative number. So looking at this, it's A. A is positive, B is negative. Question number 19. This is a system of equations, but they're not giving you the equation. You have to come up with the two equations on your own. So we've got salads for $6.50 each. We've got drinks at $2. They sell 12, 209 salads and drinks in one day, and they got eight thirty six fifty. dollars Okay, how many salads were sold during that day? Don't try to use these answer choices to figure it out. It's going to be a lot of work. So let's just put this together. Um, 
They sold a total of 209 salads and drinks. So I'm going to say salads plus drinks equals 209. Now notice I did not say X plus Y equals 209 because if you mess up and you solve for the wrong variable, you're going to have problems. So use variables that mean something. S plus D equals 209. 836.50. So that means 650 S plus 2 D equals 836.50. This is easy enough that we're just going to do the substitution method. So we want to get rid of the D and turn it into an S. So I'm going to take this, bring this down here. I'm going to say that D is equal to 209 minus S. So we got 650 S plus 2 times 209 minus S equals 836.50. That's going to give you 650 S. So S equals 93. And again, this is a good time to use your calculator. Take 418.5 divide by 450 B. Question number 20. This is a classic percentage type question. We got a 20% discount off the original price. Total amount paid was P dollars. That includes an 8% sales tax. What represents the original price? of the computer in terms of P. So we want the original price. All right, so she paid P dollars. Now, a lot of people look at this, they go, okay, 20% off, 8% sales tax. So it's minus 20 plus eight. They look at 0.88 P or something like that. Uh, don't jump at the first answer. All right, I'm gonna tell you that. Let's write this out. There's a right way to do this and this is what it is. So the P dollars that she paid is equal to the original amount. So I'm going to say original amount that has a 20% discount. So the right way to do 20% discount is 0.8. Okay. We are not going to go 1 minus 0 0.20. 0 0.8 is just the right way to be doing this. 8% sales tax. No, it's not just 0 0.08. It's 1.08 because it increased the amount by 8%. So it's 1.08, not 0.8. And we wanna know what the original price is. So we're actually solving for this. So the original is just gonna be the P divided by 0.8 and the 1.08. There you go, choice D. Question number 21. We are looking at people who are chosen at random, who had at least one dream. What's the probability came from group Y? So let's look at the people who had just one dream. Total number of people is 125 plus 39. And what's the probability that they are in group Y? Well, group Y's were the 11 plus 68. And again, we're going to go ahead and use our calculator for that. Probability, again, is defined as the desired outcomes over the total outcomes. So this is the Y. That's the number of total people. So that gets you 79 over 164. And that's going to be C. Question 22. Which of the following is the average rate of change in agriculture and natural resources from 2008 to 2010? So we're looking at agriculture and natural resources, 2008 to 2010. We want the average rate of change. What you don't want to do is you do not want to take the amount of 2009 to 2008 and then find the amount from 2010 to 2009. You don't need to do that. You can take the average of the entire thing from 2008 all the way up to 2010. Okay, so that's gonna save you some time. So let's take a look at how this works. That's gonna be 488 
106 minus 358 708 divide by 2 which gets you 129 398 divided by 2 which gets you 64,699 and that's going to be B. 23. Which program is closest to the HR ratio 2007 to 2010? So let's look at the HR ratio 2007 to 2010. We got 4,051,000,000,921. First, let's calculate that out. Four zero five one zero five zero over five nine two one three seven nine, and the answer to that is point six eight four. Okay, so be very careful about this. We are not looking for a number that seems kind of close. Okay, because if you find a closer number, then that's going to apply. So let's check out option A. Agriculture and Natural Resources. We got 373.904 divided by 488.106. So that's going to get you a 0.76 for these guys. Okay. We're going to go to Education. Education here, 2,164,000, 3,000,000. 000. So that's going to give you 0.719. Now, don't stop there and just choose it. We have to check out the other ones. So highways and transportation, we got 1,468,1773. All right, so this is going to give you 0.827. So that's clearly way out there. Public safety is the last one we have to check. And that gets you 0.567. So the right answer is B, education. Question number 24. So for this one, you actually do need to know the equation of a circle. If you've forgotten what it is, it's one of the things you actually have to memorize because they don't give it to you at the beginning of the section. So that is going to be x minus h quantity squared plus y minus k quantity squared equals r squared. Just as a reminder, the h k is the center of the circle. So that's the center and R squared, that is gonna give you the radius. Okay, so we know the center is zero four and we already know then it's gonna be X minus zero squared plus Y minus four squared. And based on that, uh, you can already eliminate, you can eliminate C, B and D. We know it's either A or C. Now, we're not gonna go through elimination. I'm gonna show you the right way to solve this. So we have a center of zero, four. One, two, three, four. And the end point is four thirds, five. So we're gonna pretend this is four thirds. Now this is a tiny little circle. And this is the same as distance formula, just using Pythagorean theorem. So we know down here we've got four thirds. This is an increase of one. We want to find this part here, which is going to be the radius of the circle. So basically one squared plus four thirds squared equals the hypotenuse squared, or we'll say radius squared or whatever. Okay, so one plus 16 ninths equals h squared. So 25 over nine equals h squared. Now, h is the radius in this case, and we don't need to actually take the square root of that because h squared is the radius squared, which is what we want. So we know it's 25 over nine. The answer therefore is A. Question 25, we've got a physics problem here, and it's asking how many seconds will hit the ground. So what does that mean? In order to hit the ground, that means the height is actually gonna be zero, right? Because anything thrown up, it's gonna go in the parabola, it's gonna start off at zero, it's gonna go up and it's gonna come back down and it's gonna be at a height of zero. So we've got zero equals negative 
t squared plus 25t. And we're looking for the answer that is not t of 0. Because when t is 0, obviously it is starting off at the ground. We're looking for when it comes back. So we'll go ahead and solve that. 4.9t squared equals 25t. And we can cross out a t from both sides. So t equals 25 divided by 4.9. And using a calculator, that's going to be approximately 5. Thanks for watching, guys. And as always, if you feel that this video was useful, please like and subscribe. And also share this video with your friends who are studying so hard for the SAT.